Now, a couple of weeks ago, I told you about some of the jobs I'm going to be doing around the garden. You didn't think I was going to do them by hand, did you? Of course not. This is a Kabuta one and a half ton mini excavator that I've hired for a week to carry out a number of jobs around the garden before we get into spring. This is costing me 190 pounds plus VAT and if you're using it at home for yourself, then you need no license or operator training to hire, would you believe? Together with this, I've also hired a powered tracked dumper that can move over a half a ton of material and dump it into a skip safely. This is costing £160 plus VAT for the week and I have to say has been worth every penny. I'll show you how to operate the mini digger and the various jobs I've been doing around the garden in a minute but firstly I want to start on something simple so I can practice with the machine so I get to work on removing some bramble roots. In this area, I cut down a whole load of brambles this time last year, but all the roots remain in the ground. So before they get going in the spring, I'm digging through them down to around a foot or foot and a half and taking them out. This is quite a laborious, time-consuming job because I've got to go through all the excavated soil making sure that I've removed all the roots I see. So with that out of the way, I move on to the next job which is to get rid of all this rubbish that I've found when I've been clearing the undergrowth. It's a combination of all kinds of car parts and domestic junk. This dumper is an excellent piece of kit. It's easy to drive with a simple backwards and forwards on each track and has got two speeds. That's not one of them, that's just speeded up video. It's narrow enough to get through a standard gate and the best thing about it is the way that it can elevate itself to be able to dump safely into a skip. Using this really takes the effort out of clearing rubbish from the back garden and it's perfect if you're removing a patio or getting rid of soil and rubble from behind your house. One of my biggest finds in this undergrowth is this big green diesel tank which is rusted through and completely empty which I want to cut up at a later date but I need to pull it out now so I'm going to use the benefit of having the machine just to get it out so I can work behind it. While I'm doing this I'm worried that if I don't move backwards that it's going to fall and hit the machine. So I'm being careful here and just moving back while I pull it towards me and thinking about my deposit. With that out of the way, I can move on and start clearing the brambles I've got left. And I'm expecting to find more car parts and junk within them. And I wasn't wrong. These brambles are a nightmare to deal with because of the big thorns. So it's really nice to be sitting well away from them and letting the machine do the work. Until I come across the biggest find so far. I move from one area to another, clearing the undergrowth before I even worry about the roots. And it's quite a big task because of the amount I have. And not being a machine operator, this takes me some time, longer than it should really. But gradually it gets cleared in a way I just couldn't do without a mini digger like this.
So I'm going to give you a very quick introduction to driving a mini digger. Don't take this as education. This is just what I've found over the last few days as well. There's courses that you can go on and I would highly recommend you do that if you're not used to driving something like this. But this is just a, an overview just to let you know the sort of thing that you need to do if you decide to uh, hire one of these. So it has an ignition just like a car which just starts. And it has a bar here that you need to push down that nothing will happen until you push that down. It also stops you going out the door. So it's just a safety thing. So until that's down, nothing is gonna move. The throttle is fixed. So it's on tick over at the moment. And I can increase it like that. And now we're ready to go. The higher the revs, the higher the hydraulic pressure and the, the stronger you'll be able to work, the quicker you'll be going to go able to work as well. So we've got two handles. The one on my left, if I push it left, we slew to the left. If I push it right, we slew to the right. This also controls the second piece of the arm, the bit of the front. And if I push it forward, it moves out. And if I bring it back, it comes back in. On the right hand side, this does another couple of little jobs. If I pull it back, the whole arm booms up. If I push it forward, it moves down. And the bucket is controlled with the left and right of this right hand. So if I move it left, it claws the bucket in. If I move it right, it claws it out. Moving the machine and tracking it, it has a blade at the front or the back, depending on which way round you're using it that stabilizes everything. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that blade is up. And now we're on the tracks. It's a little bit, little bit wobbly. And these two handles, if we're pointing forward, they'll work as you expect them to. So if I go back, they'll go back. If I go forward, they'll go forward. Or I can actually swivel like this. The interesting thing comes is actually when you're around a completely different direction, and now it's all round the other way. So if I want to move forward, I actually push them back because I'm actually going back, if you know what I mean. Anyway, let's go back to where we were. And it's a lot more stable if you put that blade down before you do any digging. And it's just put down like this, push this down. And then suddenly you're on the blade and it's a lot more stable. So the trick is to do all of these things together. So you're booming out. You're pushing the, the second arm out, you're moving the bucket, and everything is moving in synchronicity. And that takes a little bit of practice, I must say. It's very easy to do one thing at a time, but to do four things at the same time, it's practice. And I would say it's in some ways a little bit like playing your PlayStation with your children that in the first five minutes you have to think about every move of the button. But it doesn't take long before you're putting buttons together and you're thinking about the screen rather than actually pressing the buttons. And the better you become, the more accurate you are and the quicker you are as well. And this is one of the problems with being a novice is that suddenly it can actually take you a whole day to do something that a, a qualified machine operator will do in just an hour or two. But you do get quicker. When you hire a digger, it normally comes with three or four buckets of different sizes for different jobs. And I've found it reasonably easy to change these buckets. It just takes one bolt to loosen with a ratchet to unlock the bucket. And 
with a new bucket in place, it's just the opposite to connect it to the arm. On this machine, the tracks can spread or narrow, depending on what you're using it for. But even in the narrow position, it probably is still too wide to get through a standard gate. If you need to get through a standard gate, you probably have to be looking at a one ton machine. So now I've got a day or so of operating this machine under my belt. I've come next to the house to regrade this strip that falls away towards the fence. After removing everything, I start by spreading a pile of soil that I've had here for some time. And just when I'm feeling confident about my mini digger operating abilities, I get a bit too close to the fence. This was the biggest thing I exposed yesterday in the brambles. I wasn't expecting a whole engine. It looks like a four cylinder engine and probably what looks like an automatic transmission. And I've been thinking for the last 24 hours, well, how I'm gonna get rid of it. I can't pick it up. The excavator isn't even strong enough to pick it up, even if I had some sort of trolley to put it on. So to get it to somewhere that someone can take it away, is near enough impossible. At the same time, if I don't do something with it now, and then the excavator gets off hired, then this is just gonna sit here forever more. But it's okay, overnight, I had a bit of a thought. And the one thing I have got around here is an excavator. I've checked the sump and the gearbox on this, and both are dry with holes actually in the casing. So any oil in this engine has escaped many years ago. So I get to work digging a hole. I really feel I've only got one shot at this. If it doesn't go in straight into the bottom, I can never lift it out again. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Remember, subscribe, bell thingy, Patreon, all that sort of stuff. I've still got lots more digging to do. I'll see you next time. <laughs>